Hi everybody. Today we're going to talk about what happens when our control volume is moving around. So we already covered conservation of mass and conservation of momentum. Now we want to build this motion component into it. So here's our review of the Reynolds transport theorem again. We know that we have the change within our moving system. Our system is our packet of mass. Our change within our control volume. Our control volume is this fixed region of interest and then we have the stuff that crosses the boundary and we know that this relates the Lagrangian which is the system and the Eulerian which is the control volume perspectives of fluid mechanics so let's just uh, take a look at our mass and momentum forms of the transport theorem here we know conservation of mass looks like this we have the rate of change within the control volume plus the rate of mass flow across the boundary our conservation of momentum we need to remember is a triple equation uh, in the x, y, and z directions. We have the sum of forces equals the rate of change of momentum within our control volume plus the rate of change, the rate at which momentum enters and leaves our control volume. So now the question I proposed here is what do we ask what do we do if the control volume is moving around and I have an asterisk on this because we need to realize this is only going to apply today what we're deriving to an inertial reference frame meaning it's not an accelerating control volume so this is something that's moving at a constant velocity alright how do we look at this our term V dot N pertains to the flow that crosses the boundary relative to that boundary. So V dot N means how does mass flow across relative to the boundary? Well, let's look at what that looks like. I have this V, that's the movement that's absolute, in the absolute reference frame. So I'm standing still on the ground watching a jet fly overhead. What does the velocity of the fluid look like to me standing on the ground? That's equal to the velocity of the control volume itself, how fast is the jet moving, plus the velocity relative to that control volume, which we call W. So you can see it over here in a vector diagram. So if I'm in this pump, and this pump is zooming to the right at velocity V, C, V, well, from the pump's perspective, it looks like the fluid is jetting straight out. But when I add this together, here's what it looks like from on the pump. Here's what it looks like to have the pump itself moving. And then here is the vector sum of the two, which is what it looks like to a stationary observer who is not riding with the pump. So that gives us this absolute velocity vector V. All right, so I said our V dot N really pertains to W. Let's look at what that's going to do to our conservation of mass. Here we go. I'm just going to replace my velocity with W because what I really care about is that relative velocity. What does the mass that crosses the boundary look like from the perspective of the control volume itself, of the balloon? So the mass crosses the, con the uh, boundary due to the relative velocity, not the absolute and we see that. Notice that we can see what happens if we look at this as steady state. We can see that the uh, rate of change with respect to time goes to zero and we're just left with this term. Of course this wouldn't really apply to a balloon. Remember we said hey if the balloon is losing mass uh, and deflating it can't be a steady state problem. But sometimes we will see a steady state problem. Conservation of momentum, this is actually a little tricky. Our original equation applies to an absolute reference frame and the relative velocity crossing the boundary. So we've got the sum of forces on the control volume, the momentum within the control volume, and then our V rho, and we are going to do the same trick that we did with conservation of mass and put W dot N dA. Alright, we can manipulate this a little bit, it turns out. So the first thing we're going to do is substitute in our definition of our absolute velocity. So that's just going to give us this. 
W plus VCV. That's the definition of the absolute velocity. Now, we want to focus, in the case of conservation of momentum, we're only going to really look at steady state problems. Uh, and there's a couple reasons for that, but in this case, it makes the equation quite a bit simpler. So we're going to let this term go to zero because our DDT goes to zero. And what that's going to leave us with is this. We only have this term here that we can do our product on. So we've got our w, rho w dot nda, plus I brought my v of the control volume outside of the integral, and that's because that is a constant with respect to the area. The entire control volume is moving at the same velocity. It has to be some sort of rigid body. We're not going to look at um, something where the control volume would represent a system of particles. So all of that is assumed to be moving at the same velocity. Okay, so this is what we get. And now, what I want to point out to you here is that from our conservation of mass equation that we saw in the last page, I can see that this integral over the control surface of rho w dot n dA is equal to zero for steady state conservation of mass. So this term here can be assumed to go to zero, even though it's multiplied by v. v is outside the integral. This whole guy goes to zero, and what we're left with is just this. Now, I have my caveats. This is steady state conservation of momentum on an inertial control volume, meaning it's not accelerating. What it says is the sum of forces acting on the control volume equals... Uh, the integral over the control surface of w rho w dot n dA. So we can write the whole thing in terms of relative velocities relative to the control volume. That's super convenient because that means we don't have to think about what an observer on the ground sees. We only have to think about what it's doing relative to the control volume. Alright, so let's summarize that. Here's our steady state forms. We have rho w dot n dA, the integral over that area equals zero, that's conservation of mass, and then our three conservation of momentum equations, we have acting in the x direction, acting in the y direction, acting in the z direction, because our momentum is a vector. One more thing I want to point out in looking at this is that looking at this equation right here, if our flow enters and leaves at the same x velocity, wx, then there's no net x force. How do we know that? Well, if we enter and leave at the same x velocity, w sub x is the same everywhere with respect to the area. That can pop outside the integral, and I get rho w dot n dA. Well, we see that's zero by conservation of mass. So, if our things enter and leave at the same x velocity, then there's no net x force. This would be zero. Sum of forces in x equals zero. That's an interesting concept. Basically, if I have a pipe flowing left to right, and flow enters the left side and exits the right side at the same speed, I'm not generating any force on that pipe due to the momentum flux. So that's kind of saying where there's no thrust caused by mass entering and leaving at the same velocity. We'll talk more about that as we get a little deeper into conservation of momentum. Okay, so here's our preview of the problem we're going to work on in class. We're taking the same problem we did last time of this inclined plane. We still have a jet shooting from the left with a velocity in an area, and these are given as the absolutes because we're going to assume that this is shooting off of some stationary uh, nozzle or stationary water source. But now the big difference is that we're going to pretend that our inclined ramp can roll, and we're going to give it a known constant velocity of 20 feet per second to the right. We're also going to assume that we know the angle of our inclined uh, ramp, and we're going to look for how much force does the ramp place on the water under this situation where it's rolling to the right at a known speed. So that's what we're going to look at when we get together. Thanks for listening, everybody, and we'll see you in class.